This video demonstrates a fatigue analysis using EffiSafe Rubber. We will look at a constant velocity boot modeled in Abacus. The boot is loaded by applying a turning angle and then rotating the boot 360 degrees. This simulates a vehicle wheel rotating one revolution while the vehicle is turning. Our fatigue analysis will use EffiSafe's multiple block analysis feature to combine two separate boot loadings. The first loading block is defined by three revolutions at a 30 degree turning angle, and the second block is defined by 1000 revolutions at a less extreme 5 degree turning angle. The goal of this analysis is to determine the life of the boot when subjected to these two blocks, as well as to determine which of these two blocks is more damaging to the boot's life. Here are the two loadings in Abacus. On the left is the 5 degree turning angle, on the right is the 30 degree turning angle. The models are composed of two steps. The first step applies the turning angle, and the second step rotates the boot. A new EffiSafe project has been opened to create the fatigue analysis. First, we open the 5 degree turning angle model and pre-scan the contents. We typically select element centroids as the position. Also notice that stress and engineering strain datasets are selected. Now the datasets are being read into the project. Once finished, we can select the units the finite element model used. In this case, we have megapascals and millimeters. Now we will select the element set we would like to analyze. This set represents a strip of elements along the boot. Notice that we now have our file named load01 that contains the two steps. Step 1 is the turning angle being applied, and step 2 is the revolution. Now we access our second loading. Notice that we are appending the finite element model, so we would do not overwrite the first file we just opened. The data sets are pre-selected based on our choices from the first model. Once the model is finished being read, you can see that we have both of our ODB files loaded and that each file contains two steps. In this demonstration, we are only loading two ODB files, but you could include as many files as you need. Now that we have our models loaded, we will define our loading blocks based on the stresses and strains contained in our model. After clearing out the default block, we add a blank loading block. Then we add the stress and strain datasets from step 2 in the 5 degree model. Then we specify that this block will be repeated 1000 times. Next, we follow that same procedure for an additional loading block. This time, we will use the stress and strain from the 30 degree model, and it will be repeated only three times. Here you can see that we have our two loading blocks, each with their own number of repeats and their own stress strain dataset ranges. Just like with opening ODB files, you can also define as many loading blocks as you need, even though we are only using two in this demo. Now we move on to the analysis settings and assign a rubber material to our element set. We also specify the algorithm that will be used to perform the fatigue calculation. Using the EffiSafe rubber plugin, we select surface since our element set is composed of 2D membrane elements. Then we set the default group to not be analyzed since it is not needed for this analysis. We will change the name of our output file to something more meaningful. The results will be written to an ODB file because of the file extension we are using. Now we can click Analyze and run our job. At the end of the analysis, this window appears showing that the element with the shortest life is element number 33793. If we open the results folder, you see that we have a new ODB file which contains the fatigue life contour for the analyzed elements. We will look at this file in a minute, but right now we will run a second fatigue analysis this time, we will request that the total damage and the damage per loading block be exported. And since we know the element with the shortest life from our initial analysis, we will only analyze that single element. In our algorithm settings, we will also output the plane dependence for this single critical element. This request will write out the calculated life for every potential crack plane analyzed instead of just the most critical plane. Now we are ready to submit the second analysis. When the job completes, we see the damage per block output that we requested. Block 1 corresponds to the 3 repeats of the 30 degree model, and block 2 corresponds to the 1000 repeats of the 5 degree model. 
So you can see that the 3 repeats contribute much more damage than the 1000 repeats. When we open the results folder again, note that we have our ODB file and a new file with damage sphere in the title. This file contains the plane dependence output that was requested for the most critical element. At this time, we will look at these two output files, starting with the ODB file. With the ODB file open and the life contour plot selected, we can see that the element with the shortest life is located at the lowest fold of the CV boot. Now we can view the damage sphere results using our damage sphere viewer by opening the output file that we created. The plot shows a sphere colored with a contour plot of the log of the fatigue life. Each point on the sphere represents a crack plane that was analyzed. The location of each point coincides with the tip of the unit vector normal to each crack plane. The black arrow represents the critical plane, giving the worst life. There are different visualization options that can be selected, such as viewing the critical crack's edges or turning off the contour lines. The orientation of the crack planes that you see in the viewer can be aligned with the material orientation that was used in the finite element model. Here you can see how the critical plane is oriented with the boot's geometry. This concludes the demonstration. We've seen how multiple source files and multiple loading blocks can be used in EffiSafe, how the damage of each of those blocks can be determined, and also how damage spheres can be visualized to gain more insight about the fatigue failure of your parts.